pumping water examples. In this case, we are going to be working with similar triangles. One of the typical examples of the work chapter. A tank in, is the shape of the inverted right circular cone. I don't remember how the right circular cone looks like, you will say. Let me just search online. So I did this and here is how it looks like. And the height of the cone is 6. So if I want to draw it like so, this is going to be 6 meters. And the radius is 2 meters. And it's filled in, not fully, but only 4 meters of chocolate. So this time I will not use blue color. I will use what chocolate could be. No color here. Let's do gray. Gray is boring. So this one is good. 4 meters are filled in with chocolate. Do you know why they decide to switch from water to chocolate in those types of problems? Because then the density will be different and it's just more fun, I guess, to imagine chocolate. Okay, good. This is 4 meters. Find the work required to empty the tank by pumping the hot chocolate over the... Oh, it's a hot chocolate, okay? So it's a tasty one. Over the top of the tank. The density of hot chocolate is given as delta. So what is the cross-section of this story? It's a, as you can see, if I want to see it in 2D, it's going to be a triangle in this case. And your job is to figure out whether you want to put a center of the axis. You can put it actually in many different places. You can put zero at the height or the top of the cone. You can put zero at the bottom of the cone. You can put uh, zero even over here or even where the height of the chocolate is. The answer will be correct if you set up the correct integral. I'll be putting zero at the bottom of the cone and then I'll go up to the positive direction. So it goes up and to the right to the positive direction because sometimes you can do the other way around. So in this case then, we're going to start working with this cross section, which gave us the right triangle, as you can see. And uh, we're going to use similar triangles properties to find R. What is R? R is the radius. In different problems which we worked out before, when we worked with shapes like these, R was always the same. See? And that's why we did not have to look for R. R was given, in this case it's 6. And it will be the same here, 6, and it will be the same here, 6, and so on. But in this example, radius is changing. At the very bottom of the cone, radius is tiny and even 0. At the very top of the cone, radius is 6. Maybe here it's 5, and so on. So radius is a variable here. Let's call it r. We need to find that r to include it in the integral. So we have a big triangle and a small triangle. And we're going to use these properties, 6 is the height of the big triangle over 2 that is the radius over here remember the biggest radius we know it's 2 not the very biggest one equals x that is the changing variable over here x that's the height uh, of the water is keep changing right and over r which is also keep changing so Actually, you don't have to call it x, since I already called it y variable. Uh, let's, I guess, stick to the idea. So, in some books you will see that, as you can see here, they call it x. That means this is x axis goes up. I don't like it. I like using y variable for the height, because it matches with my imagination of how y axis looks like. So let's call it y over r. But I see the point that they say, we don't know the height of the water at every single moment. So let's call it unknown x, and that makes sense. In literature, they like doing this way. So here's the important relationship between y, which is the changing height of the water, and r, which is the changing radius, also of the water and the cone. So 6r is 2x. Solve for the radius. We're looking for the radius. 1 third x. Put this in the box. That is important. So my radius depends on the height. Oh, we don't do x. Sorry about that. Let's do y. My radius depends on the height, right? And height is changing the height of the water. That's y. That makes sense. For this, for this height is small radius. For this height is big radius and so on. Now we're looking for the area of every slice. The area will be pi r squared because as you can see, slices give you circles. Here it is, isolated circle over here. 
pi r squared. So step one. You could start with step one, figuring out that the area of the uh, slice is pi r squared, and then you could say, okay, the r is actually changing, so we have to solve it. r is not fixed. Now, step three, so area of each slice is a of y the area will depend on the height because at the bottom area will be small small circles at the top big right so everything depends on the height equals pi r squared r depends on y and we found it pi one third y squared or one over nine pi r squared in meters squared units Put it in the box. That's the area of each slice. Now, those uh, infinitely small or infinitesimal slices, they have volumes. Volumes of slices will be dv. And that is an area of y times the thickness of each slice. If you want to see the picture, we found this area, pi r of y squared but each uh, has a width remember that here it is and since the width projections goes to y-axis that's why i'm calling it dy that's my way of explaining it at least so those cylinders will be collected together and they will they're giving you here it is all together they're giving you this cone and the chocolate now that's going to be one over nine pi Why um, Why did I put R here? That was wrong. Change it. R, I meant Y over here. I just noticed the mistake. So it's going to be Y squared dy meters cube. So we're going to 3D now. Put this in the box. This goes to the integral. We are actually almost done creating the integral. So since mass mass is density density multiplied by volume of each slice then mass will be delta they gave us delta times dv and they gave us the density of the chocolate if you have a physics books in your hands you can just google that yes you can search that yourself so integral becomes and now the most important part so we definitely need to use uh, gravity right uh, let's write down we know it's going to be rho well rho was in different books that was the density of the liquid in this case they called delta here then they will have g that's the gravitational constant 9.8 times a of y times d of y and dy and now we need to explain from a to b or from c to d since we're using dy but doesn't matter now c and d will be the location of the water when it's not pumping yet in not the water in this case it is chocolate the chocolate is located from zero to four this is how much i will have to lift the chocolate how much work i need to put for pumping out the chocolate which is from zero to four from zero to four now delta is they gave us at the beginning 1040 kilograms per meter cube so it's going to be 10 and 40 times gravitational force is 9.8 also meters per second squared times the area we put it in the box over there one over nine pi y squared right that's my area times and now the most interesting is d d is we are pulling this how much the water will be pulled well, not the water why i keep selling water it's chocolate the chocolate will be pulled out of the edge of the cone there's no fountain so the pulling 
happens from 0 to 6 and at every different moment that will be a different uh, height so it will be y which is keep changing so y in every single moment will be different y right so we will see it's kind of like the top minus the bottom the area between two graphs if you want to see it this way y is, one is y equals six and the other one is y equals y and that represents the shift so how much wa how water will be traveling the chocolate the chocolate will be traveling six minus y six minus y like so six minus y six minus y top minus bottom so this is my shift six minus y shift dy stare at this integral for a little bit and see if you understand it from 0 to 4 that is a location of the liquid liquid is located from 0 to 4 original 1040 that's chocolate chocolate density 9.4 that's the gravitational gravitational uh, constant then that is the area area of the slice and since we're working with circles we have pi r squared here bring me back come on come on thank you pi r r squared my tablet doesn't want me to keep doing work problems and get tired of them it's already the third work problem i'm doing for my students then dy is the width width of each slice that gives me slice that gives me a volume so these two guys together gives me a volume of each slice make sense and finally six minus y that's liquid is traveling liquid traveled so for example traveled for example if we need a fountain and they say put 10 feet up above 6 you will have 16 minus y that's how much how far liquid is traveling traveling or elevating or levitating whatever you want to name it okay and i don't think i should spend time on in this video to actually solve it or you think you need help with solving this integral i'm afraid my tablet will die but uh, i can help you with this if you multiply all the constants first you'll have 10, 101 92 divided by 9 pi this is integral from 0 to 4 distribute 6y squared minus y cube dy that's very simple integral just power you will have 10 192 over 9 pi and then you will have 6y cube over 3 minus y to the 4 over 4 bar from zero to four zero gives you zero so you only need to be careful with four and it gives you 101 92 divided by 9 64 pi which is approximately 227 691 what are the units who knows three two one zero joules that's the units for the work needed to be done to pump the water why i keep saying it's the water it's the chocolate my favorite thing in the world to pump the chocolate from the conical shape um inverted cir right circular cone shape it's like ice cream basically uh, from the bottom to the top but uh, as you can see it was not filled in completely and that's why the shift happened there which is very convenient to include in the integral hope it's getting more clear for you after watching all these videos what work pumping the water pulling the rope and so on keep working hard and see you next time